Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 2b, the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page 49, the question we're doing is number 8. It says, first of all, to define uniform acceleration in a straight line. So, how do you define uniform acceleration in a straight line? Well, we told you what uniform acceleration was. Well, we told that acceleration is equal to the rate of change of speed with respect to time. That's what acceleration is. That's what uniform acceleration is as well. So we say if it's in a straight line, if it's in a straight line, that means it's got a direction. So you could say it's actually a uniform velocity. So we'd say it's a rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So that's what acceleration is, first of all. That was pretty pretty straightforward. Next, we're asked. Uh, a particle that starts from rest with a uniform acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. After how many seconds will its speed be 30 kilometers per hour? So first of all, I suppose we need to say that's 30 kilometers. We need to change that into meters per second. Well, we know that this here is 1,000 meters. Because that's, that's what a kilo is, 1,000. And we know an hour has 3,600 seconds because it's got 60 seconds uh, per minute and 60 minutes in the hour, 60 60s is 3,600. So, we know that it's 30 times 1,000 meters per hour, like that, so it's 30,000 meters per hour. So if it's 30,000 meters in an hour, we need to find how many meters per second, so divide the number of seconds in the hour, I divide by the number of seconds in the hour like this equals 30,000 divided by 3,600 is equal to 8.3 meters per second like that. So is that correct? Yes, it is. We check that in the back of the book, and that is correct. So we need we need to find out uh, we need to find out when its velocity or speed will be. Uh, what did I say? It was 8.3, was it? 8.3. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is, it says it's, you know, it's particle starts from rest. So let's draw what we always do, and I'll draw our speed time diagram like this. Time measured in seconds on the x, and speed measured in meters per second on the y. We know that at time t is equal to zero, its speed is equal to zero because it starts from rest. And we know that uh, it's got an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. After how many seconds will it be 30 kilometers an hour? So we'll say this is 8.3 meters per second. We don't know what the time is here. Because it's uniform acceleration, you can jo join the, the, two, the two points with a straight line. Now, we're told it's a uniform acceleration of 2 meters per second. So let's just create our, our triangle shape here. We know that that is 8.3. Now, there are a couple of ways of doing this. First of all, you could call this angle here alpha, and say tan alpha is equal to the acceleration, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, is equal to. Well, in this case, the opposite is 8.3 over the adjacent, which is unknown. We'll call that t. But we know that the acceleration is equal to 2. So we'll say 2 is equal to 8.3 over t. Therefore, t is equal to, uh, what's that, 4.1 or something like that, is it? Yeah, 4.16 seconds. Is that correct? Just to, let me check here. Let me check the back of the book. Um, Actually, count 25 or 6. 4.16. Yeah, that's correct. So that's that. Uh, 4.16 seconds. There, like that. So that's correct. And that was that was pretty simple. Of course, you could use uh, U vast if you like, but I, I think we're we're gone beyond that at this stage. And then we're told how far from its starting point will the particle be when its speed is 60 kilometers an hour. Uh, then you're asked, the particle is then brought to rest in uh, 2 meters. Calculate the deceleration. Well, what's 60 kilometers an hour? So, 60 kilometers 
in one hour is equal to 60,000 meters in an hour is equal to 60,000 divided by 3,600 seconds 16.6 meters per second like that alright so 16.6 so what we'll do is we'll use the same diagram we'll say this is 16.6 like that we don't know what this time is here and we're asked to find after how long it will be 16.6 so the same thing we'll say tan alpha is equal to uh, 2 is equal to 16.6 over t therefore t is equal to uh, 8.3 seconds like this all right 8.3 seconds so after 8.3 seconds its uh, speed will be 16.6 is that correct so let me have a look uh, 25 over 3 8.3 seconds that's correct and then we're told that the, the particle decelerates to rest immediately like this and it does that in uh, 2 meters so the area underneath this curve is 2 meters and we're saying uh, we're asked to find calculate the deceleration so there are a couple of ways of doing this again or we could use tan so let, let's just use tan I suppose we're using that at the moment we'll say tan alpha Actually, I can't. I'm not going to call that alpha. I'm going to call that beta. Tan beta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent is equal to um, is equal to what? Well, look at 16.6 is the length, so that's the opposite 16.6 over the adjacent, which we don't know, because we don't know after how long it go, goes to rest. So that's no good to us really, not yet anyway. So what if I just draw this triangle again? We know that this here is 16.6, and we know the total is equal to 2. So the, uh, sorry, to 2 meters. So the area is equal to 2 meters. But what's the area of a triangle? It's half the base by the height. So it's half times the base, which you don't know, times 16.6 is equal to 2. Like that. So 4 divided by 16.6 gives you the base at 0 0.24 seconds is equal to the base like this so now I think we can use tan so let's say 16.6 divided by the adjacent 0 0.24 is equal to what? So 16.6 divided by 0 0.24 gives a deceleration of 68.89 meters per second squared 68.89 now let's just see if that's correct. It just says 69.4 here. Yeah, look, this here, that's approximately 69 meters per second squared. So I wouldn't worry about that, the fact that we've got slightly different results. It's just to do with significant figures. I'm just going to check that at the back of the book all the same. So we're on exercise 2B, question 8. Yeah, it's it is correct because it says six two, it, the the answer is left in third form. It says it's six two five divided by nine, and we didn't we kept I, well I kept using the actual decimal form, so that's why we'd have lost a slight bit of accuracy. So that's how you do that one. Now, is there anything else I'd like to show you while we're doing that? Um, no, I think that I think that's pretty much it. We've seen we've seen a lot of this already. So thanks for watching. Hope that was useful. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.